Howdy, howdy, y'all. It's another one. Sorry, I'm a little late. Uh, I know I try, I typically do these on the weekends, but I don't know, I might start doing them more often. I'm not sure yet. It just kind of depends on my time and situation. You know how life goes. Anyways, um, so this is chapter five of Monty Rosh's I Am That. This is what is born must die. Which, you know, off the bat, yeah, like, you know, they say, you know, there's only two certain things in life, death and taxes, right? So, I mean, off the bat, kind of common sense, but this chapter is actually, I have a feeling I'm going to keep probably saying this a lot too, this is the deepest chapter yet. Like this one, I think this, I, there's really no, it's not really any fat in this um, chapter, if that makes sense. Like all of it's very lean. It's very, and it's almost very hard to just like pick out little parts just because it all, it all just drives together so well. But there's one part of it that really does interest me because of my own personal kind of spiritual experiences and practices lately. And that is, they talk about the sense of a separate ex uh, existence. Um, this one part, at one part, the questioner is, uh, says, what is the sense of a separate existence. And I think Mata Raja's response to this is very interesting. He says, it is a reflection in a separate body of the one reality. In this reflection, the unlimited and the limited are confused and taken to be the same. To undo this confusion is the purpose of yoga. So, I mean, I think that's you know, very interesting. It's a very, you know, definitional thing and it's very deep and different than like you know our western perception obviously but that's i think many of us know that you know western t the style of yoga is just you know it's very just body centric and just focus mostly on the stretching and stuff and doesn't really typically incorporate too much of this actual deep spiritual nature of this stuff um some other interesting parts um Earlier in the chapter, the questioner just asks, you know, what is death? And I think Maharaj's response was very interesting. He says, it is the change in the living process of a particular body. Integration ends and disintegration sets in. Disintegration sets in. Excuse the cat meowing. She just wants out. But yeah, um, that's... I, know. I think that's just a very interesting, uh, deeper way of viewing death and life. And like I said, this whole chapter is just very, it's very interesting. Um, what they talk, and they talk about, um, but does not death not undo this confusion? Actually, to go back to that when they say yoga is to undo the confusion of this, this you know, what we feel is a separate existence, but it's really just a reflection of the one existence. Um, he talks about does death not undo this confusion though and it says in death only the, the body dies life does not consciousness does not reality does not and the life is never so alive as after death so dang right uh, that's I mean just this chapter like I say it's all it's so lean that it's hard to like just like I say pick parts out. This one is probably one of my favorite chapters so far. I'm probably going to reread it quite a number of times, maybe, probably, maul it over, because this one is deep. Um, probably revisiting this one quite a bit. Anyways, hope you all have a good one. Peace.